Hello Knitters, I'm Marion from Love Crafts and today I'm very excited because you know there's always one technique that you really need to learn. For me it's entrelac. This amazing combination of overlapping interlocking squares. So if you need to learn a fantastic new technique what you need to do is ask an expert. So I've got with me, this is Louise from our customer support smiles team who is a fabulous knitter. So I thought let's ask Louise how do you do entrelac? <laughs> it, it looks really, really hard. It's not. Honestly, it is not as hard as it looks. A lot of the stitches will be stitches you're already familiar with, and it's just working them in a new order to create these triangles and rectangles that are used. Uh, we've got a small sample here. Uh, this is worked from the Paintbox Woven Wonder Cushion. So if you want a project to get on with, you can actually work that with this video. Those are the techniques that we're working from. and. We'll walk you through it, step by step, and it'll be easy as pie. Let's get started. So when working on Trelac, we have six sections that we'll be looking at today. And this sample that I've made here is from the Paintbox Woven Wonder cushion cover. Um, I'm working with a base of two triangles. The original pattern is worked with five. So we have the base triangles, which will be the first section that we work. Once we've built up the base, we work on the first row of left-leaning rectangles. So there are three sections to that row. We start with the right edge triangle, which is this right triangle here, leaning to the left. Then we have the left-leaning rectangle in the middle. And finally, another left-leaning triangle, this time on the left edge. After that, we move on to the right-leaning rectangle and we'll need to repeat the left-leaning rectangle row. Finally, we finish up with these top triangles here. So starting out, we have the base triangles. Now, in the original pattern, you cast on 55 stitches. For this sample here, I've cast on 22, so we're just working two triangles. We start with the base triangles, which are worked across 11 stitches and 19 rows. If you're making the cushion cover, you'll need to cast on 55 stitches, but for this sample, I've cast on 22, so that'll make two 11 stitch triangles. So with your cast on stitches, the first row is a wrong side row, and we start by purling two stitches. So this is just your normal purl stitch. One, two. And then you turn the work just as you would at the end of a row. You don't need to do any special techniques at this point. And now we knit those two stitches. So. One, two. Now turn the work again, and this time we purl three stitches. So, one, two, three. And again, we turn the work. Again, there's no special stitches here. It's just purl and turn, and we knit those three stitches back to the beginning of the row. Turn the work again, and this time we're purling four stitches. One, two, three, four. And again, just turn the work and knit back across those four stitches. So you may have guessed that this is becoming a little bit repetitive now. We're just working the same stitches across with one more stitch each time. So turning again, I'm now purling five stitches. And on the final purl row for the triangle, which is 11 stitches, you just want to purl across those 11 stitches. And this is the final row of this triangle. So when we get to the end, we're not going to turn. 
and that sets us up to work the next triangle. And to work the next triangle, you just begin purling the next two stitches and repeat the 19 rows that you've just worked. And finally, on the last triangle, you're purling across all 11 stitches again, as you did with the first triangle. So if you're working the cushion cover, you should have five base triangles at this stage. Uh, for this sample, we do only have two. And once you get to the end of that row, you just want to cut your yarn as we're now moving on to the second color. So leave a nice long tail so that you can join and weave in the end. And your knitting will start to look a little bit funny at this point. You'll have your triangles with the stitches on. Don't worry, this is how it's supposed to look and it will start to look like the sample once we start introducing the next section. So now that we have our base, we're moving on to the first row of the left-leaning rectangles. That's this row here, worked in blue, and as I, in the light blue. And as I said, there are three different steps for this. So first, we need to work the right edge triangle. That's this one here. And you can see this is giving you the outer edge of your cushion and joining with that first base triangle there. So to start this, you'll take your next color and just start using that as if it was your working yarn. So for the first row, we just want to knit two stitches. So just leave a tail again, wrap the yarn round and knit those first two stitches. And then you're going to turn the work and you just want to slip the first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front so keep your working yarn to the front. Slip the stitch as if you were going to purl it, but don't work the stitch. And then purl the second stitch. And then we'll turn our work. So just to make sure nothing comes unwoven here, I'm just going to knot these two ends together. And once you've finished either your sample or your cushion cover, you can weave those in so they're nice and tidy. So to give this nice straight edge that we have on the sample, we'll be working increases on this outside stitch. So just knit into the front and back of the first stitch. So that's knit into the front. Bring the needle around and knit into the back. So you should have two stitches from that one stitch then we are going to slip one, knit one, and pull the slip stitch over. So again, you are slipping the next stitch, so without working it, knit the stitch after it, so that stitch will be in the previous color, and then pull the slip stitch over. And that's how we're getting this joined edge here. That's just the slip stitch worked over the new stitches. Now for every wrong side row on this triangle, you're just going to turn, slip the first stitch purlwise, and purl to the end of the row. So then we turn back again, and it's the same steps again. So knit into the front and back of the first stitch, and then this time you're going to knit one, then slip one, knit one, and pull the slip stitch over. Then we turn the work, slip one, and purl to the end. So just like with the base triangles, we're working with one more stitch on each row. And if you're working like this in more than one color, you may choose to work in a single color, um, in which case there'll be less clear to see. 
but you always want to slip the last stitch of your working colour, knit the next stitch which is in the previous colour and pull the slip stitch over. So if you're not sure about keeping count of your stitches, that's one way to keep track as well. So again, knit into the front and back. And for this row we knit two, slip one, knit one, and pull the slip stitch over, turn the work, slip one, and purl across the row. We just keep repeating those steps with one more stitch on each row. Knit the last stitch of that base triangle and pull the slip stitch over, which gets you ready in position to start the first left leaning rectangle. So the next stage is the left leaning rectangle and to work that the first thing we need to do is pick up 11 stitches along the side of the base triangle. And you just want to pick up your 11 stitches evenly along this row. So there's lots of different tips and tricks on how to space your stitches evenly. Some people will tell you to pick up a stitch a certain number of rows I find it's often easiest just to do it by eye. Uh, if you're working with a longer section, you might want to pop some pins into your work, in which case just pop a pin in the middle um, or a pin in the middle and every quarter of the work. And you can use those to see how many stitches you've picked up. So I have six here and I need five more. You really want to come right down into that bottom corner. And these 11 stitches are going to form the bottom of this rectangle. So once we've picked up our stitches, we just turn the work and the wrong side rows are worked the same way as they were for the previous triangle. So we just slip one stitch purlwise with the yarn in front and then purl across the next 10 stitches. A lot of the techniques that are used for the entrelac are actually the same stitches and techniques just used on a different section or in a different direction. But we'll go through each section individually. So back to that first picked up stitch, just make sure. You want to be very careful here that you're not moving on to the previous triangle. And we turn the work again. And this time, because we're working the rectangle, we want to keep our 11 stitches. So at the beginning of each row, we're not working any increases this time. We just knit across 10 stitches. just as we did with the previous section, slip one, knit one, and pull the slip stitch over. And then we turn the work, slip one, and purl 10. So once you've finished this rectangle, you'll be on the right side row. Now the last section of this row is the left edge triangle. That's this triangle here. And just like the rectangle before it, we start by picking up 11 stitches along the side. So we're still working in our second color.
And again, you just want to make sure that you're picking up those stitches nice and evenly across the row. We'll include some links at the bottom of this video. Just if you need any assistance with picking up the stitches, we'll pop some tutorials there. So once you've picked up your 11 stitches, you just want to turn. And this triangle is quite simple. So we're just going to work some purl two together stitches and some purls. So for the first row, purl the first two stitches together and purl the next nine stitches. So this brings you down from your 11 stitches, you will now have Turn the work and you just knit across those 10 stitches and a bit like the rectangle that we've just worked you are going to be just repeating the same two rows with one less stitch on each row. And the final row of this triangle is going to be worked in the second color. So you just want to cut your yarn with a nice long tail and move on to your third color. Or in this case, I'm going back to my first color. Uh, the woven wonder cushion is worked in five shades. And on the last row, all you want to do is purl the two stitches together. And this time you're not going to turn the work because that leaves you just where you want to be for the next row. And tie those two ends so you don't lose your stitches. Now that we've finished the first row of left-leaning rectangles, we're going to move on to the right-leaning rectangles. So for this row, just seen here in the middle, we don't have any side triangles and we're just working on the rectangles. So to start the first rectangle, which is this one, we've already got one stitch and we want to pick up and purl this time 10 stitches along here to give us 11 stitches in total. So again, you want to pick these up evenly and we will pop some links and some tips into the bottom of this video. And you just want to pick up 10 stitches evenly across the row. So you'll notice with both the previous rectangles and with this the instructions are to pick up a knit or to pick up and purl. So the technique that I'm using is doing both at the same time just using one needle and the yarn to pick up and work the stitches as you go. Just trying to space them out evenly across that row there. And like I say, you can mark this out before you begin, or you can just do it by feel as you work the row. So 
picking up 10 stitches. So you'll have 11 stitches in total. And you just want to turn the work and slip the first stitch and knit 10. So these are very similar to the rectangles from the previous row. The main difference is that we are working most of the stitches on the wrong side. So for the right side row, it is just going to be slipping the first stitch and purling to the end. Then when we come to the wrong side, we want to purl 10. So taking us up to that last stitch. eight, nine, ten. And this time to incorporate it with the rectangle from the previous row, you're just going to purl two together. And as we've done previously, you just turn, slip one and knit ten. And these two rows are just repeated until you've incorporated every stitch from the triangle of the previous row. Once you've finished your rectangles, you'll be back at the beginning of the row. So now, these last two rows that we've worked are just going to be repeated to the end of the cushion. So for this sample, I've just done one more row of the left leaning rectangles. So you'll just need to work through that as we did at the beginning of this video. You can always skip back and then we'll come back and look at these top triangles to finish off together. Now that we've finished another row of the left leaning rectangles, we're ready to work the top edge triangles. Of course, if you're working the cushion cover, you'll need to work quite a few more rows of the rectangles in both directions. But for this sample, we've just left it with these three central rows. So the last section that we need to work are these top edge rectangles. And these are a lot simpler than they look, and they're very similar to some of the previous rows that we've worked. So just like with the right leaning rectangles, you'll have one stitch on your right needle, and you want to pick up and purl 10 stitches along the row to give you a total of 11 stitches. And like I say, this is just like the rectangle that we worked before. So just spacing those evenly along your row. You might want to mark out the row before you begin so that you know exactly where you're picking them up. Or you might want to just do it like I am, by eye. So because we have one stitch from the previous row, we're just picking up 10 for this triangle. But for the rest of the triangles in this row, you will need to pick up 11 stitches as you won't have one stitch on the needle to begin with. Working this triangle is quite similar to the previous rectangles. So once you've picked up your stitches, you just want to turn, slip one, and knit across the row. So you're knitting 10 stitches. just make sure that you've secured that yarn tail from the previous row. Now this time we're working our decreases on the wrong side and this is actually going to form this top edge here. So there's no casting off with this pattern 
and all you need to do is purl the first two stitches together. Purl the next eight stitches. Seven, six, seven, eight. And then purl two together. So you're incorporating the rectangle from the previous row, just as we have on the previous rectangles. And then turn the work. And just as we have every time before, slip one and knit to the end. So I'll show you how to work that row once more. This is quite a simple technique working across the top. So we Purl two stitches at the top. Purl to the last stitch. And purl two together. Turn the work slip one and knit across the row. And when we get back to the end of the row here, you can just see that the top edge is being formed where we're working these decreases. So on the wrong side again, purl two together. Purl to the last stitch. And purl two together again. And you just want to repeat these two rows until you've incorporated every stitch from the previous rectangle. And then you move on and do the same thing again in the next space. So you'll pick up 11 stitches and on each wrong side row, purl two together, purl to the last stitch and purl two together. And you've now learned all the techniques that you'll need to complete this entrelac, either for a sample like this for the woven wonder cushion cover or for any other patterns that incorporate these techniques. And all you'll need to do on your final rectangle when you purl your last two stitches together is bring the tail of the yarn through to fasten off the end. So you just keep working like this until you've completed all your triangles and we'll meet you back at the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That's really taken the mystery out of Pontrelac. I never thought that it would be that straightforward. So I hope you really enjoyed that, I did. Um, you can try out the paint box woven wonder cushion if you want to um, or just make yourself something gorgeous make a lovely cushion to start off with if you want to um, just following louise's brilliant video thank you louise you're welcome that's fantastic so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to love crafts watch some of our other tutorials and let us know if there's something you want to see um, so until next time goodbye bye